This is Twit. Okay. Unfortunately, not all mistakes can be qualified as mistakes. Last Friday, the day following Microsoft's big Secure Future Initiative to Advance Security Engineering announcement that I just talked about, we learned from Bleeping Computer that Trend Micro's zero-day initiative had informed Microsoft back on September 7th and 8th of four new zero-day vulnerabilities they had discovered in Exchange Server, one of which allowed for remote code execution. Microsoft acknowledged the reports, but decided that the flaws were not severe enough to warrant immediate attention and decided to put off the fixes until some later unspecified date. In other words, thank you, now go away. Since ZDI strongly disagreed with this response, they decided to publish the rough descriptions uh, and actually the rough locations uh, of the four vulnerabilities under their own tracking IDs in order to at least warn exchange admins about the security risks, even though, unfortunately, there's not much for exchange admins to do about them at this point, except to worry more than they already are. Now, If something about this overall scenario seems familiar, where security researchers inform Microsoft of flaws that they have found somewhere, which they believe are important, and after presumably examining those reports, Microsoft decides that the problem is not worthy of their attention, you would be correct. We've been right here before, and if history continues to repeat itself, we also know what lies ahead. Microsoft will leave this unpatched, Some bad guy somewhere will pick up on the possibility of an outstanding unpatched remote code execution vulnerability in Exchange Server, and they will go a-hunting. Sometime later, Exchange Servers will start being compromised in some mysterious new way that no one ever saw before, except that, whoops, Trend Micro and Microsoft both saw it in September of 2023, and, and one of the two of them who could have done something to prevent it chose not to. Like I said, we've seen this whole thing play out before, and it's a shame. So, ZDI 23-1578, that's their own uh, you know, tracking te- uh, terminology, they said is a remote code execution flaw in the chained serialization binder class where user data isn't adequately validated. This allows attackers to deserialize untrusted data. Successful exploitation enables an attacker to execute arbitrary code as system, the highest level of privilege on Windows. So now our would-be bad guy knows right where to look in Exchange Server. And surprise, surprise, the problem is deserialization. We've talked several times about the inherent difficulty of deserializing data securely. The process of serializing data takes some sort of formatted data structure, you know, often a JSON structure, and turns it into a blob for storage or transmission. That's that's the thing known as serialization. The reverse process of deserializing the blob requires, yes, the interpretation of the data that the the serializer produced. Interpretation. So we have some flaw in an interpreter in the chained serialization binder. Probably wouldn't be too difficult to find. So just for the record, though they are not also remote code execution flaws, the remaining three are still some concern. We've got 1579 located in the download data from URI method. This flaw is due to insufficient validation of a URI before resource access. Attackers can exploit it to access sensitive information from exchange servers. Then there's 1580. This vulnerability in the download data from Office Marketplace method 
also stems from improper URI validation, potentially leading to unauthorized information disclosure. And finally, 1581 is present in the create attachment from URI method. This flaw resembles the previous bugs with inadequate URI validation, again, risking sensitive data exposure. So they, they all allow those three for some sort of unspecified information disclosure. While it's not running the attacker's code, which has been remotely supplied, which is what the first of these four can, information leakage can still be very valuable to attackers as part of a larger campaign. The mitigating factor behind all four of these vulnerabilities is that they all require authentication. You need to be able to sign in as a user to this exchange server. So this may be the basis for Microsoft's dismissal of this as anything to worry about. But we've seen cyber criminals have repeatedly demonstrated that, they're, that they have many ways to obtain exchange credentials. There's brute forcing weak passwords, phishing attacks, purchasing them outright on the dark web, or acquiring them from info stealer logs. So once the bugs are found, the need for a credential for a specific exchange server might not pose an insurmountable problem. Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative folks said that the only salient mitigation strategy would be to restrict interaction with exchange server. But, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? Unplug it? Many businesses and organizations cannot operate without access to their exchange server. So anyway, I'm just putting this out there. We'll see here in the future whether Microsoft decides to slip some fixes in to a forthcoming update or whether the bad guys decide to do some reverse engineering of those now you know, specified uh, functions in Exchange Server, find the vulnerabilities, then you know, arrange to get themselves an authentication onto Exchange Server, and then get up to some mischief. We will, we will basically see whether we, in all of the history is going to repeat itself where Microsoft said, ah, no, nothing to see here uh, until there was. You know, this is what happened with the, the horrible print server nightmare that we went through a couple of years ago where, you know, the, 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 re the researcher who found the vul vulnerability kept trying to tell them over and over and over, look, this is a problem. You didn't fix it yet. Yeah, and then when they said they did, they turned out they didn't, and then it ended up com really coming back to bite them. So uh, we'll see. Deny, um, deny, fix. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, and and you know what's the recourse? None. You know the licensing ag agreement says you know if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, we tried, and uh, you know can't go anywhere else because my Microsoft. You know, no one could argue that they're not a, mon a monopoly and that they don't have that power today oh hey that's a really nice iphone you have there you totally picked the right color hey since you do use an iphone and maybe use an ipad or an apple watch or an apple tv well you should check out ios today it's a show that i micah Sargent, and my co-host rosemary orchard host every tuesday right here on the twit network it covers all things ios tv os homepod os watch os ipad os it's all the os's that apple has on offer and we love to give you tips and tricks about making the most of those devices checking out great apps and services and answering your tech questions i hope you check it out <laughs>